Returning to suspense reveal after a short break. Today I'm going to show you The Girl with All the Gifts, a post-apocalyptic zombie film from 2016. There will be spoilers ahead. Keep an eye out and be cautious. Melanie is laying in bed when her cell's lights turn on. She wakes up and begins preparing for school. Two soldiers enter, and she cheerfully greets them, but all they seem to care about is strapping her to the wheelchair. They'll take her out into the hallway and put her in a line with other kids her age. Melanie and the others are seated in a classroom with numbers on the walls. Melanie asks the teacher, Miss Justino, to tell them a story and proposes. She tells them a myth in order for it to be considered history. The teacher hesitantly agrees to read the myth of Pandora's box to them. Melanie is returned to her cell after class, where the two tensed soldiers refuse to wish her good night. She'll be served food later. The serving is a plate full of worms. As she eats, she falls asleep. Melanie is visited by Dr. Caldwell the next day. After the girl solves one of the doctor's riddles, she is given a new one, stating that it is a logic puzzle. She asks her to solve Schrodinger's cat puzzle. When Melanie is unable to respond, the doctor notes something about her conduct and reads it back to her, referring to her as a subject. Lastly, the doctor asks Melanie for a number and she replies with 13. Later, the soldiers pick her up and the other children for school again. Melanie notices that number 13 hasn't been opened as she is carried by the numbered cells. When she enters the classroom, the same numbered spot is still vacant. The teacher decides to assign him a writing assignment for that class, and the students are concerned that they will be unable to come up with a tale to convey. Melanie is the only one writing a lengthier one in her notebook, so she eagerly raises her hand when the teacher asks for someone to read aloud what they wrote. In her literature, she depicts herself as the savior and hero. The teacher is moved by Melanie's narrative and approaches her, wanting to touch her. Suddenly, Sergeant Parks bursts inside the classroom and screams that touching the children is forbidden. He wants to give Justino a reminder of why that's the case, so he walks up to one of the children and rolls his sleeve, bringing his arm close to it. The child sniffs him and unhinges its jaw, wanting to bite him. The other kids imitate this behavior, Sergeant Parks enters Melanie's cell after the lecture. As the others are getting ready to take off her restraints, the girl antagonizes him, so he leaves her restraint to the chair. Justino goes to see Melanie the following night, and when she finds she's been left like this, she walks into the cell and begins removing the bindings. The girl gets a sniff of the teacher's scent and starts turning like the other children before Melanie turns completely. She tells the teacher to get out. Later that night, Dr. Caldwell comes to visit her again. They converse, and she requests another phone number from the girl. Melanie responds with the number 4, the same as her personal mobile number. Sergeant Parks arrives the next morning to get Melanie. He is able to get her out of the cell and into an elevator. He wheels her out of the facility as gunshots are heard all around. Soldiers may be seen running and shooting towards the military complexes in a barrier. Melanie is confused by the sight as Parks wheel her to another area of the structure and into a laboratory where Dr. Caldwell awaits her. She asks the girl about Schrodinger's cat, but when she doesn't get the response she wants, she explains that the cat in the box is both alive and dead, just like Melanie. A second doctor injects a sedative in her arm, instantly knocking her out. They bind her and take her on a slab, but she shortly awakens. Justino rushes inside to prevent Melanie from being chopped up by the doctor, after a few other promising words, she convinces the teacher to put her weapon down and immediately pepper sprays her, incapacitating her so the soldiers can arrest her. She explains to her that she isn't just cutting Melanie up, but is using her as a source for a vaccine. Justino is removed from the scene. Alarms begin to sound. Caldwell instructs the other doctor to lower the shutters, but as she does so, a zombie breaks the glass, biting her mercilessly. Caldwell kills the zombies, but in the process, she cuts her own hand. The other doctor begins to change entirely, but she manages to get out of the lab just in time. Melanie is alone in the lab with the zombie, which does not harm her. The girl takes out a scalpel and cuts herself free from her restraints. Melanie walks outside to see the complex in full disarray, with zombies swarming the area and troops attempting to gun him down. She notices Justino being beaten up by the soldiers. Enraged, she walks up to them, attacks them, and bites them, killing both of them before falling. Justino wakes up to see Melanie by her side, takes her up, and gets her in a military vehicle. As the van leaves, trailed by a herd of zombies, the complex is entirely taken over by zombies. 
Sometime later, it stops in the middle of nowhere as Parks and Kieran realize that Melanie is in the back of the vehicle with them. Justino lets the girl out as Caldwell screams that doing that is not her decision to make. Melanie runs a little distance away from the car and comes to a complete halt, clearly seeing the exterior for the first time. The others stay by the vehicle, trying to radio to Weather Outpost, to no avail. As the doctor tells, they should go get her test subject. Parks, Kieran, and Caldwell search the truck for supplies but discover no water or food, only a zombie hunting mask. The sergeant devises a strategy to travel south to Beacon, presuming that everyone at the facility is dead except the zombie kids. They strapped Melanie into Gunner's seat of the vehicle, masked her, and drove to a river to obtain water. When they arrived there, a few zombies find them, prompting a shootout with the soldiers. When one of the troops is bitten during the struggle, Parks waits a moment to see if he'll turn, then shoots him, closing the vehicle doors behind him. He notices Justino has brought Melanie into the room with them, which makes him nervous. Caldwell reveals that the zombies were people who had been infected with a fungus that was spread by biting. When Parks goes to start the vehicle, he realizes that it is broken, forcing them to walk through London, a faster but more risky path. Parks and Kieran take a look around the perimeter, which they would have to cross. It's filled with zombies. They inform the others that there is no alternative but to pass truffle zombies and find shelter and supplies. Once inside the city, the gang travels carefully amongst a swarm of sleeping zombies, taking care not to wake them. Parks suddenly comes to a halt. A zombie woman pushes a baby cart toward him as they hit a dead end, and Caldwell rushes up to her and tells her to stop. She sees the baby move in the cart and checks it, only to find a rat inside. She yelps, first awakening up the zombie mother, then the others. The party manages to flee and makes its way through the city's horror streets, ultimately discovering an abandoned hospital and entering it. Parks finds an opening to another floor, and they all climb up to a safer level. Parks, Justino, and Kieran go on patrol right away, while Caldwell and Melanie remain on the sideline. As they're left alone, the girl asks where she came from. The doctor adds that she and others like her were found in a hospital's maternity ward. They were the children of mothers who infected the fungus while still pregnant, allowing the illness to enter their bodies. Caldwell tells her through the placenta that they were different from the other zombies in. That they were able to think and react nearly like actual people. Later, Justin Yuo returns, giving Melanie new clothes she found for her and apologizing that she didn't find any food. That night, Park and Justino discuss Melanie, and he informs her that she is loved by the girl. Meanwhile, Kieran is watching over the girl, and she has formed a bond with him. They see that more zombies had gathered in front of the hospital the next morning. They don't know how to get out, but Melanie has an idea. She convinces them to let her go outside and find a means to get the zombies away from the building because they won't attack her. Caldwell doesn't like the plan, but the others accept because there isn't another option. Melanie requests that she put on her new clothes before leaving. She goes outside and passes the zombies without trouble. Suddenly she sees a cat, hunts it down, and eats it raw. Later, she goes into a house and finds a little dog. When she comes back, she uses it as a decoy for the zombies, allowing them to escape the hospital. Parks puts the mask and handcuffs back on, and they continue on their way to Beacon, a trophy-abandoned city. On their route, they see something strange fungus growing out of the zombies' bodies, which the doctor believes is the fungus next step in its life cycle. She then tells Melanie that the fungus in her case acts more like a symbiote than a parasite, as it does in the others. Going deeper in the city, they find a huge mass of bodies growing into a massive fungus that Caldwell suspects is the reason why no walking zombies are around. When enough of them come together, the fungus matures into a stage capable of pollinating bigger areas, if not the entire world. They come across a mobile laboratory while on their trip. They enter the vehicle and begin searching. Through it, Park first tries the engine, then the radio. There was no response. Melanie is becoming restless as if she's going to turn, as Kieran leaves on a supply run. They let her out to hunt after she informs them that she has to eat as well. She locates her food quickly and eats it. She hears an odd sound after she finishes eating and follows it to a bookstore. She looks through and notices a group of children chatting with grunts. When one of them comes inside and tells the others that he has sniffed something, Melanie realizes that they are just like her. They're all following him out the door. Caldwell is becoming increasingly ill at the mobile lab, and she informs Justino that she has sepsis. 
Then, with Justino's chagrin, she starts talking about Melanie again, about how she needs her brain and spine to manufacture the vaccine. Melanie reappears and informs them of the children she saw, certain that they will go on the hunt for Kieran. He's seen walking down the street and discovering an unopened can on the ground, then another, until he comes upon a store and crawls under the shutter to gain entry. Once inside, he starts eating and looking through dirty magazines. A little girl appears behind him, startling him. She lures him between the rafters of the store and momentarily more children appear. Thanks for watching. For more suspense movie please subscribe and enjoy.